Hey, y'all already know what time it is. I am the governor of college football, also known as Lever KT. And with me today is the mayor of college football, also known as Nino. Nino, what's happening? Let's get it. We Let's got, get it. We got a game in SEC country, and I'm praying that y'all not sleeping on this game. It's at 7 o'clock p.m., and I think this is a great measuring stick game for mm-hmm. both teams. You Coming into the season, I know that, you know, a friend of the family, Crane had high expectations for Auburn. I believe you have high expectations for Armour. And I thought they would at least go bowling. I thought this would be one of those seasons. A hey, Hugh Freeze first year, bowling or better, it's a success for me in my book. I know Auburn faithful may not like that, but that's just where it's at in my book. But I think that this LSU team, they they should I call this a must win? Is that hyperbole if I if I'm saying that this is a must win game? That yeah. things things are getting a little bit a little bit hot under Brian Kelly sleep. Is that hyperbole? <laughs> <laughs> I mean I mean I don't know. Like I'm just asking a legitimate question. But Auburn travels to the big easy to take on LSU. Auburn's three and two in the season. Defeating teams by an average score of thirty eight to eighteen with a success rate of forty six point two, which is thirty third in the nation. Nino, talk to me about this Auburn team. Jake, I'm sorry, bro. Please don't roast me on, on, on Twitter. Don't come get me, Jake, Kyle. I love you both, right? Those are my, <laughs> both my Auburn guys, okay? It's seven weeks, and I feel like Auburn's still struggling to find an identity. Hmm. You would think by now they would know what they were and how they're going to go. And I feel like every week it's like flipping coins. Are they a ground and pound team behind John Chris Hunter and Robbie Ashford? Or are they going to develop Peyton Thorne into their system instead of throwing this kid into the wolves, right? But one thing's for sure. You have to walk before you can freaking crawl, people. I mean, crawl before you walk. See, that's the problem. I'm doing what Will Hugh Freeze is doing. He's trying to walk without crawling. You got to crawl first, okay? Ease him in. You, know, you, you threw the kid to the wolves, and now you're trying to mend him afterwards. Well, maybe he doesn't want to deal with you anymore, right? He's had his up and downs, more downs than ups, that's for sure. But is it on him, or is it on this coaching staff, right? Because at the end of the year, when a gentleman who's there still last year took over a team that had no culture and no direction and no drive, Cadillac Williams had them winning games. Cadillac Williams had this team going over 100 yards for the first time in about 12 games, okay? Cadillac Williams had them bought in. I'm not sure what anybody's bought into right now. And I'm not saying that that that's Hugh Freeze's fault. I'm not saying that's Peyton Thorne's fault. I'm not saying that's anybody's fault. I'm just saying you're looking at a team that's got talent and got no identity. I love it. I I thought you said that perfectly. There are two things that I hate when it comes to the sport of college football. One, a reaction, hence the name of the show. Two, (laughs) playing musical chairs at quarterback. I can't stand it. I never could stand it. I have the utmost respect for the old ball coach, Steve Spurrier. But back when he was coaching the Florida Gators, he had a quarterback in the name of Jesse Palmer. A lot of people may know him from The Bachelor now. But he also had a quarterback named Doug Johnson, and they literally were split time. It could be play-to-play, series-to-series. I hate musical chairs at quarterback. I hate not believing in a guy and right. sticking with a guy. I hate that, and it's unfair to Peyton Thorne. So it has certainly been coaching to answer Nino's question. Let's move on to the Tigers, the other Tigers. LSU has been scoring a lot of points this season, but also have been giving up a lot of points this season. Nino, Nino, I want you to be as honest as you possibly can be. What have you seen from them this season? Baby shit saw front seven. (laughs) You wanted me to be honest. I'll be honest. I, I, I love it. And they... And maybe it's because they can't spell go right. Last time I checked, go is G-O, not yeah. G-E-A-U-X. Okay? <laughs> maybe you're just putting too much into the wrong things. Let's talk about going forward and not how to spell go. It's simple. It's two letters. Don't make it five. Okay? It's, it, it, that, that's off the rip. When you move Harold Perkins Jr. from the inside linebacker, the outside edge, you shit on your defensive scheme. And I just don't understand where the pressure's coming from because Perkins and Mason Smith 
who hasn't played in a while should have the hunger of a lion. I think it's taking place off. I don't know. But they are not putting the pressure that I was expecting from them all year. We all know every year for the past dozen seasons, they've had a 100-tackle linebacker, right? A guy that all he does is go downhill and wreak havoc. A guy that's just a run clogger. They ain't got that this year. They ain't even close to having that this year. Perkins should have been that guy, but he's playing to the left side on the edge. Opposite side, Mason Smith. So what happens? They are just running through the middle of that line like a wet fucking paper bag. Mm. And you're letting up 280-plus passing yards, almost 260 yards on the ground, almost 440. It's just bad. 445 yards of offense per game allowed. That's terrible. Right? Yeah. 113 points per game allowed. What the hell happened? Like, I just it, – it, it bothers me so much. I hate it. But Matt House is going to be searching for new – New, new, new property because he about to get shit canned because <laughs> this team had so many expectations and after the first loss I was right there with Jake Crane I was right there with most of these guys in college football don't count out LSU don't count them out it's only one right they can still spin us around and especially in this day and age it's SEC they can still spin us around and win and then they lost another one and then they started playing like poo and now that defense looks like Junior varsity high school right now. I, I I'm totally baffled. Like I feel bad because the offense is clicking, but they got to score every drive now, and that's bad. Yeah, it's it's terrible. It it makes me think. Like I feel like it was best for Ed Orjon and LSU to part ways. I, I truly feel that way. I think it was just At that best. moment. Yes. Yeah, I feel like it was just best for both parties, but. Has Brian Kelly let's, let's put the, the national title over there? Let's put the let's put the national title aside for Air Arch. I think uh you are not gonna coach that team in eight one. Team was just uh no, I'm gonna say something right now. Mm -hmm. you, when it comes to that aspect, okay, you may not have had to coach anybody, but you had to manage all them egos in one room. For sure. Some sometimes that's harder than putting a game script together. I could, I could definitely see what you're saying there. But national championship aside, because like I said, that, that team was just loaded. Wagon. Re really loaded. Do you think Brian Kelly has done a better job than Ed Orgeron? National no. championship aside. No? no. Wow. No. Right. They should have left, left the leprechaun in, in South Bend. <laughs> I mean, it just it just felt like a bad marriage, even though he did his thing last season. And all oh, it's not lost for LSU, but it just it, when he came down and faked the accent, man, that just something faking just the is, accent, faking the dancing. He he's just faking in a three dollar bill. All right, I, I don't trust him <clears throat> more than I can throw him. I, I and I don't think the players trust him. To be totally honest with you, I wouldn't be surprised within the next two years if he ain't there no more. <laughs> so tell me who the players to watch both offensively and defensively for both teams. Malik Neighbors is, is the layup. <clears throat> but I'm only going to put this layup on there because he's second in the nation receiving yards. And I've been saying this as my comparison for a long time. I'm going to stick to it. He reminds me of Justin Black when coming out of Oklahoma State. Might be a little bit smaller. The way he plays, swagger. He, he got it. And I, I think he's going to be in that top. Three wide receivers in this class, okay? You think it's him versus Keon Coleman for that second spot? Yeah. And don't sleep on Malachi Corey. Corey. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Just don't. He, I think he's How better than How would he test, D though? That's the only thing. He That's can cool. jump through the roof. Mm -hmm. He's fast as hell. Like, his cone drills are going to be dumb. His athleticism is dumb. I think that the, the testing is what's going to shoot him up there and put him in that. It, it should. He's a, he's, a, he's a dog. But. Can somebody get the smell and salt for Harold Perkins? Mm. I had so much. I thought he was going to be a straight Rottweiler that just couldn't, could not stop smelling the blood. And I don't know if it's him, if it's the scheme, if it's Kelly, if it's House, if it's a combination of everything. But I haven't seen my man get down at the buffet table and eat yet. And I want to see it. And I think this is a game. For some reason, this game always lives up to the hype. Right. It always does. It does. Even if it's a 13-10 it game or it's a 33-30 to 30 game, it always lives up to the hype. 
primetime players perform under the lights. Perkins is a prime primetime player. Hasn't been up until now. I think this is the game where he breaks out. I know he had some baggage in the beginning of the year. Q. Let Cadillac run this game script, please. Give Jacquez Hunter somewhere around 20 to 25 carries. Let him pound the rock. He will get you over 100 yards. He will get you a tutty, but he will also keep them dogs or maybe puppies on the LSU's defensive front true instead of attacking and destroying your quarterback who's trying to find an identity on that offense. I love this kid. I think he's going to be in Mobile this year. I think there's a chance that he's going to be a top five to seven DB in this class. But he's going to have his hands full in this game. Jalen Simpson, DB, he's top three in the SEC. He's top ten in the nation right now, okay, for Auburn. But he's going to have to be covered. Neighbors, Lacey, or Thomas. He's going to have his hands full. I want to see how he matches up against the big dogs. Could we see a situation where Harold Perkins doesn't like how he's been played this season? Portal. Okay. Okay. Portal. We 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 are thinking the same way. Go see Nick. Oh. <laughs> we've, we, we've seen go it. see Nick. Go see Nick or go see Lane. And both of them guys are gonna get the best out of you. Uh-huh. I love it. Oh man, I could definitely see him. I could definitely see him playing with this. <laughs> well, I, I know LSU fans are one here, and I can definitely see him in bad. But, all right, Coach Nino, time to put your coach hat on. Talk to me about the keys to victory for Auburn. Uh, long, ground and pound drives. Okay. You don't have the firepower to get in the shootout with LSU. Okay. No. Someone in that wide receiver room has to step up besides the tight end named Rivaldo Fairweather, which, again, called it. Let Hunter eat. He's a pounding, grounding, pounding back that's got some shiftiness to him. Give him 20. Your defense, you have to pressure Daniels. I'd rather lose to Daniels' feet than lose to his arm, okay? Because his arm can cut you up. There's no way he's going for 250 and three tutties on the ground. You know what I'm saying? You can't let him have three-plus seconds to throw at the neighbors, Lacey and Thomas. You got to apply pressure. Like the lock said, apply pressure. <laughs> Uh, I love it. Um, the thing that I've noticed with the Tigers this year is, and you could just tell that it's a new staff implementing new systems, and I see them make plays, and then I see missed assignments. Then oh, yeah. I see, then I see, you know, team a team that when they become disciplined is going to be a team to be reckoned with. Now I need you to put on your other hat, go over to the other sideline, tell me the keys to victory for LSU. Stop rolling out wet paper bag defense. <laughs> Stop it. Okay? Get angry. Act like somebody slapped your mother. Okay? Mm. Perkins and Smith should eat. They should eat. Should. Early and often. I don't care if you got to make up rumors. Say that somebody took his sister and, and, and slapped her in the mouth in front of a bunch of people. Somebody called his father all kinds of names. Do whatever you got to do to fire up those two dogs. Because once you get them dogs off the leash, the pups will follow, okay? Early and often. I need Chestnut. I need Major Burns. I need Alexander. They need to step up. They need. To, they don't have crazy dudes on, on, on the offense for, for Auburn, but you need to eliminate them. Lock them down and make them one-dimensional. When they're one-dimensional, you can stack that box and wreak havoc. But can you do that? That is the problem. We haven't seen it consistently. We've seen it at times. We've seen it for quarters. We've seen it for drives, and then we've seen a whole 180 the next drive. I need to see a unified defensive front that can get pressure early and often. Got a question for you, Nino. A little bit of a rapid-fire question. Did you like the life that you've seen at LSU in that second half versus a damn good Mizzou team who was ready to stick the fork in them? No. Mm. Because that game shouldn't have been where it was. Listen, I will give you that Cook as having a year. Right? He is. I, I, think, I think he threw his first interception in that game, right? That was his first pick. Yeah, year, yeah that was his first one all season. Yep. 
Vernon leads the nation in receiving yards, okay? We've seen the reemergence, and I, oh man, I, as I, I start to say things again, I feel like maybe I should be the Nostradamus of college football because I called, <laughs> I called the reemergence of Theo Weiss. You uh-huh. can ask me more about it. I said he needed a change. Look at what's happening. My man's doing it. Three out of the last four games, Tuddy having having a year, but that he hasn't had in a while when he was at uh, Oklahoma. The 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 talent on that defensive side against LSU. Shouldn't allow Cook to even have that amount of time to be throwing a ball to Luther Burden 40 and 50 yards downfield. They should have been in his in his neck like a tie, and they weren't. So if if LSU played up to the standards of what the, the, the talent level was there, I don't even think this game was as close as it mm, okay. could be. I think LSU should have went. I, I said to you at the beginning of the year, LSU had two games that they had to worry about. From what I seen on paper last year, what I see on paper this year and what I seen on film last year, they should have two games to worry about. They got beat bad in both those games. After that, I threw everything out, out the window because I didn't believe in them anymore. And you need to prove it to me. They haven't proved the damn thing to me since. I love it. That's a, <laughs> that's a hell of a take. And the reason why it's a great take because we're going to get it to who will win this game. Coming into this game, Auburn is 11 and a half dog with the over under pin, 63 and a half. You know, who will win this game and what? LSU will win this game. By 15 or more points, the game will stay under because Auburn cannot score. Jaden Daniels is not going to let his story end because Brian Kelly can't coach. Jaden Daniels is not going to let his story end or his draft stock stop because his defensive line doesn't want to play ball. Jaden Daniels is the X factor in this game. Jaden Daniels has grown exponentially in my eyes in these last four or five weeks, just from, from these four from last season, the kids got it. Just got to stop trying to be Mike Vick. Don't, don't jump, bro. Slide. When you jump, you get impaled. Yeah, Twice. I don't get that. Yeah. But his legs, his arm, his decision making, his sitting in the pocket with dudes are flying by him. Man, he's been electric this year. And you've only seen his draft stock rise. And if you don't believe it, you're just being a fool. I want to have to agree with you. LSU wins this game. I believe they go under on the over under, but I do believe LSU will make this game more interesting than it should be. So I don't believe they'll cover that 11 and a half. Who's scoring the point? I don't know. <laughs> That's the only I, I, reason I why I said that LSU yeah. will cover the 11 out because I just don't have faith. Like, okay, if Zach West Hunter goes off and has a buck 50 and a touchdown, that's going to be enough to cover 12 points? I don't think so. Peyton Thorne has to be in his bag. Yeah. But where's pa- Pass it, pass it, and running the rock. Shane Hooks has been MIA, the, the, the transfer from Jackson State after mm-hmm. the first week of the season, right? Jay Fields had first three weeks of the year, came out, made his coming out party, kind of kind of just dissipated. The last two weeks of the season, for them, o- offensive receivingly, receiving wise, it's been Rivaldo Fairweather. Fairweather, the tight end. Yeah. He's top one at 60 yards. So where's the points coming from? That's that's why I get nervous. And I think LSU has had enough. I'm not saying LSU like the coaching staff or the program. I think these kids who have a future, yeah. maybe Daniels, right? I think they had enough. Diggs is a running back. I can't stand him as a person because I think he's got his head in his ass. But John Emery Jr. can run the ball mm-hmm. and he can catch the ball. Now, don't whether he can, you know, put his head in a book and get the grades. That's another story for another day. Right. But when he is on the field for LSU, and I said it last year after the four game suspension, he came back. They went on a run. Last week was his first game. Write that down. I love it. I'm I'm hoping LSU could put it together in all three phases of the game, just not. It, it, it being the Jaden Daniels and company show yeah. with Malik Neighbors, I'm hoping they can put it together in all three phases. I I'm am defense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that we need to see it. I am the governor of college football, also known as Lever KT. And with me, as always, is the homie Nino Brown, the mayor of college football. This is our reaction previews. You all take care. We'll see you.